Hello everyone, my name is Malcolm Hall, and today I have for you a presentation about Jupiter's largest moon, known as Callisto. Now in this presentation, I'll be running through pretty much everything you'd wish to know about this celestial object. So without further ado, let us begin. So I'll start off with a brief overview. As stated previously, Callisto is one of Jupiter's moons, and was discovered in 1610 by Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. It also has a heavily cratered surface, as you can probably tell from the picture on the right hand side. All of the dots that you see on Callisto's surface are actually craters. It is also commonly referred to as Jupiter 4, or Jupiter IV, using Roman numerals and is the third largest moon in the solar system. By the way, Galileo Galilei wasn't only an astronomer. He was also a mathematician, physicist, and philosopher. Callisto has an average density of 5.403 grams per centimeter cubed, and a diameter of approximately 4,820 kilometers which happens to be 0.38 times that of Earth. It also has a mass of 1.08 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms, which is 0.018 times that of Earth. Additionally, Callisto's volume is 0.0541 times the volume of Earth. The picture located on the right-hand side is a false color image of Callisto. The parts of Callisto that are dark violet in color represent the most heavily cratered portions of the moon's surface, and the red represents the portions that are the least cratered. Callisto exerts a gravitational force of 1.24 meters per second squared, which is 0.13 times that experienced on Earth's surface. So obviously, something that weighs a lot on Earth would weigh considerably less on Callisto. This pie chart shows the composition of Callisto's atmosphere. As you can see, it is mostly composed of carbon dioxide at 97%, with a small amount of molecular oxygen, which I estimated at 3% because an exact percentage wasn't provided. This discovery was made in 1999, when the Galileo spacecraft named after the man who discovered this moon, flew by Callisto. Only later did scientists discover small amounts of molecular oxygen in its atmosphere. Callisto has an albedo of 0.22, so clearly it is an extremely dark object. Callisto's average surface temperature is negative 172 degrees Celsius, making life extremely difficult. The picture shown above shows Callisto in comparison to our moon and the planet Earth. Additionally, this photograph displays Callisto as it would appear if you were to look out the window of a space shuttle while traveling through space. This is my scale diagram. The middle line, as you can see, is 15 centimeters long, so 3 centimeters represents one astronomical unit. Callisto is only 0.013 astronomical units away from Jupiter, so it is very close to its parent's planet on the scale diagram. In this diagram, Callisto probably should have been slightly smaller, but I decided to leave it for the sake of you being able to see. My calculations to determine where to place Callisto on the scale are below the diagram. This photograph shows Callisto's plane of orbit around Jupiter. In case you find it hard to see, I have made an arrow that points to where Callisto is in the picture. Callisto takes 16.7 days to complete one revolution around Jupiter, and 16.68 days to complete one rotation around its axis, so it takes roughly the same amount of time to complete both a revolution and a rotation. It orbits Jupiter and rotates in a prograde manner. It also has an average orbital velocity of 8.21 kilometers per second. This diagram shows the inclination of Callisto's axis with respect to its plane of orbit around Jupiter. 
Now Callisto has zero axial tilt, therefore it is inclined by zero degrees with respect to its plane of orbit around Jupiter. This diagram shows the inclination of Callisto's orbit with respect to Jupiter's equator. This is actually quite minute, only measuring 0 0.281 degrees. So this is a picture of my flag, and I'll give you a moment to look at it. On my flag, the spotted gray area represents Callisto's heavily cratered surface that has undergone over 4 billion years of activity. The symbol resembling the letter K was simply Callisto's astronomical symbol. The model of a carbon dioxide molecule symbolizes Callisto's atmosphere, which is almost completely composed of carbon dioxide. Finally, the rock texture and blue stripe symbolizes the fact that Callisto is composed of approximately equal amounts of rock and ices. The picture that you can see on the bottom right shows Callisto's composition. The blue layer towards the surface is just ice, and the thin purple layer below that you may not be able to make out is believed to be a layer of water. And of course, beneath those two layers is just icy rock, which is what Callisto is primarily composed of. I'll conclude my presentation with a few did-you-know facts about my celestial object. Did you know that Callisto has the most heavily cratered surface of all celestial objects currently known? Did you know Callisto is thought to be a dead world because of the fact that there is hardly any geological activity? Did you know that there are no mountains on Callisto, probably due to movement on its surface? And finally, in Greek mythology, did you know that Callisto was a nymph who was turned into a bear by Zeus's jealous wife, Hera?